for me, when I was going through my depression, it was not living through my sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was playing ball at the time and I was making money, but I was not happy. So when you wake up every morning and you're doing something and everyone else around you is excited for you, mm -hmm. but you're not happy, wow. mm -hmm. you know, and then on top of that, I was dealing with, you know, the pain meds. So you don't realize how pain meds wow. affect mm -hmm. your mood. Wow. So I wasn't happy and then I was moody. Yeah, I and was then, like, who is this person? <laughs> Hey, I'm Kadeen Ellis. And I'm DeVal. And this is Couch Conversation. So DeVal and I have been together for almost 16 years and yeah. married for almost eight. And Ooh. we find ourselves debating about the same thing. So we figured we would open up a debate to other couples to see yeah. how they feel about these things. And we're going to bring the conversation to you. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Couch Conversations. I'm Kadeen Ellis. And I'm DeVal Ellis. And today we have two lovely couples who are going to speak with us about a topic that is very near and dear to us. Um, and I'm actually gonna normally open the conversation, but I'm gonna pitch it to DeVal because, you know, this is something that he's had to deal with, so. Gosh, it's funny, right? Because I'm saying to myself when uh, producer told me, I'm trying not to get emotional because it's always, think getting to that point is always the hardest part is talking about it. First thing I wanna do is thank everybody for allowing me to be vulnerable, allowing me to share the comments and all of the people who have been able to support us going through this. And even though we went through it years ago, we appreciate you guys. And um, I want to appreciate these next two couples that we're about to hear from. So I'm going to start on my right. And we have Aaron, Aaron White. And the Ergeny White. We have been married for nine and a half years, yes. together for 10 and a half years. Yes, yes. And we have one three and a half year old little girl named Clayley. Oh, nice. And marriage has been. Marriage has been a roller coaster. Uh, hey, <laughs> marriage has been gangster. Hey, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. All right, gangster. Ooh, and like to this. my left. <laughs> I'm Blair Paysinger. Spencer Paysinger. Uh, we've been together since 2011. Uh, married since 2016, and we have a 16-month-old daughter named Cairo. I'm interested in hearing you guys' story of you know, what were you going through what caused the issue of depression, who was going mm -hmm. through it, and how you ultimately came out of it. So. Mm -hmm. I'll say I'll start this off. This was about four or five years into our marriage, and we had a business together that was going to group homes, abandoned youth. We would go to prisons. We would go to group homes, foster care agencies. We went to uh, a big education, uh, I don't want to say the name, but uh, they contracted many people like us and quickly our business really impacted youth a lot. So for about three years we had a highlighted time. It was where we were really broke when we first got married. I don't know what happened to me but I was like my first week when I got married I was feeling myself. So I was like baby you quitting your job we gonna start a business right now. And she did it and that's why I said marriage is gangster because right. she, yeah. she made that happen. Uh, and then a year was crazy, but the business went fast. Mm -hmm. And within about a year and a half in our marriage, we were making six figures. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we were still able to do the dream that I had before I even met my wife. That became your dream as well. Yeah. And uh, it was up and going, then out the blue, they switched, like the government passed something and it switched. So our contract ended. And mm -hmm. we lost all funding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, yep. it still hurts. It hurts. And still. just the kids, yeah. too. So before, we were doing creative stuff, doing poetry, hearing the stories of the youth. And, and quickly, we, we couldn't even get to them anymore. So it wasn't like a high school where we could just walk in. I mean, this right. was government-funded places that we couldn't get to no more. Yeah. And, and that in itself hurt. But then the finances, then... Yeah. What do we do? And then on me, like a fool, I, my identity was in what I did. My identity right, wasn't right. in God. My identity right. was in six figures, business. This is what we do. Changing lives. And, and for me, and I'll just speak just on my part, I, how I led my house after that was I, I went into isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I just went into isolation. And... Um, uh, that's when things, it was the first time in our marriage, and this is about four years in, five years in, where it was like, Rrr! it got real. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is when it was like, all right, it just got real. Yeah, we were navigating having these relationships with 
high schoolers and middle schoolers and developing all of that and kind of just had to abandon them. And we couldn't right. really explain why. And they had mm -hmm. already been abandoned. So, um, but during our time with them, we had heard so many stories and navigated so many things with them and didn't realize that not only have we lost our business, we had lost all these relationships, but we also had secondary trauma. Because mm -hmm. we had heard all these stories mm -hmm. and had navigated so much with these youth Right. And now it just kind of fell out from under right. us. Wow. So um, I remember navigating it mm. in isolation. I isolated from... I so you both We both isolated. did. Yeah, we yeah, both yeah. isolated. Yeah. We isolated from each other and yep. we isolated from our community. Yep. Um, yeah. I remember honestly binging on television. We actually didn't... It was didn't, on Netflix. We, <laughs> Netflix yeah. was hard in the house. <laughs> yeah, it was... <laughs> We actually yeah. didn't have television the first four years of the our marriage, marriage. Right. and then because you was you yeah, we, was, we, was we just yeah, yeah but and purposeful. yeah that uh, wine every day, mm -hmm. multiple glasses of wine. So you both alcohol. went through a state of depression. Oh, oh yeah, time. at the yeah, same time because it was a family oh, business, wow. so mm -hmm. it was like. And we didn't talk about it. We didn't go to therapy. That mm -hmm. hers yeah. was Netflix. I could clown on her <laughs> Netflix because mine was real thing. But I got diagnosed with high blood pressure. And like, Are so you they, eating bad or it no? Was just, it was just hereditary. hereditary. They was okay. telling me I'm all, my eating was off too, but but then so they gave me vasoretic pills. Anybody know vasoretic pills? You just gonna pee all night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was just peeing all night, and then, mm -hmm. and then I was like, I can't do this. And so weed brownies became like that's what was just it. Just what it did was yep. it lowered my blood pressure. Mm -hmm. But then there wasn't like a how to of how to right. what you do. You it's just, just there. Shoot, I ain't got no business. So what you trying to do today? All right, yeah, I was post, trying post to that. Just post. Oh, we so you was watching Netflix. <laughs> yep. Drinking Did one. Did you have your daughter at this point? No, 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 no. Daughter, no, 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 daughter okay. didn't even gotcha. do this. So the yeah. isolation was not necessarily from each other. No, it was from each other. It was they from did. each other because mm -hmm. where I would go is I would just go off to myself and watch you would and binge. Too. Okay. Yeah. We and might um, we might have medicated, but we would medicate and separate. Mm -hmm. Um. And kind of in the midst of this transition, we moved into my mother's house. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So we had that dynamic. And yes. you lost your identity as a man because you had to move back into your mother-in-law's house. Mother you didn't have your business. Yeah. Finances yeah. weren't there. Yep, there you you and your wife wasn't on the same yep. page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear. Because I, I, I already know, bro. I, I already know. We're going we're gonna we're gonna to come, come back. back. Uh, we know, we know, we know that like two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, wow, that was a lot to follow. Yeah. Um, so our, I um, experienced depression in high school and no one around me noticed, so that was just bringing me deeper mm -hmm. into it. Um, so then when we started dating, he was already playing football, so he was in New York. I was in California. I had just graduated and moved back home, and I wanted to move to New York every time I went. I was so happy. I thought, like, you know, I need to be out here. I need mm -hmm. to, this will be great. If I just move, I'll figure it out. And he, I now, looking back, I'm very happy that he did this, but he refused to let me move because he wanted me to not just move for him. He wanted me to have right. my own thing. Um, so that was, like, a, a year, basically. Yeah, um, and a over a year. I just... I would go for like five days and be so happy, a happiness that I did not know mm -hmm. existed in life. And then we would go to the airport and I would just cry mm -hmm. every yeah. time. I'm, I'm not, I was not a crier. I don't think mm -hmm. my mom has seen me cry mm -hmm. and I can't even tell you when. And I would cry in the car. And I, I, th I was like, it was like, I, I should have been going home. I should have been feeling better. Like, yes, mm -hmm. I'm, go I'm doing my own thing, but I didn't realize that like, this was my home. This is where I need to be. I didn't know that. So I was fighting the, like, I don't want to put this on him, but, like, I want him to make time for me and, like, mm -hmm. hear me out because I knew what it... I didn't want to go back to a dark place that I was right, in. Right, right, yeah. But I also... He's playing football. He's busy all day. I can't right. super, super put demand. it... Right. right I can't right, right. put everything yeah. on him. Yeah. So I felt like he wasn't, like, understanding, and it was just a constant, like... Mm -hmm. Battle. Did you know she was going through that or? Somewhat. Going into my fourth season uh, with the Giants, um, my third year, I, you know, I started 12, 13 games for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going through my own stuff, 
going into my fourth year, I assumed that they wanted to build on uh, what me you starting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we had the season we had, it wasn't the best, but mm -hmm. I felt like I was being productive. So, you know, taking that mindset of, okay, I'm, I'm building on, mm -hmm. um, you know, the past season, that was around the time that she wanted to start moving out uh, to New York. And for me, you know, I didn't want her to just be at home all day yeah. waiting for me to get home because, right. you know, there were times when she would come and visit and, you know, I'm at the facility from 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. Mm. And then just because she's in town, you know, I give up some of my free time to, we go, we go into the city, we go to dinner, right, you we, want to we go to a home. show, we, we do there, something. Right, just, yeah, okay. like, yeah. So I didn't want that to continue to happen if she moved out there. So I always told her, I want you to move out here when you have something that's yours, a job to go to, something to work on. So you're not sitting there waiting for Yeah, me. because, right. you know. That's super considerate of you to even say right, that. Right, I respect that. I don't yeah. think a lot I of people that. even say that. Yeah. But, you know, where I've, you know, come to grips with it over the years is I felt like I attributed somewhat to the depression that she was in because mm -hmm. not more than two months when she moved into in, to my apartment in New York, she had a job, but her job let her go. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I forced her to get a job when she ne didn't necessarily want to get a job. Mm. And it kind of took her deeper to get down. A job. I well, didn't want that job. But I felt like I was driving her towards that, right. especially it, it was a job she didn't and want. And not letting it happen right. organically. Now she felt the pressure of having to get a to job. Get a job. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was at the facility and she calls me. And this, this is a random call. It's the middle of the day. And she goes, So my job just let me go. And, you know, that was hard for me because, you know, one, I was going through my own things with. Yeah. Uh, in my fourth year, the Giants just straight up told me, like, we see you more as a special teams player. Mm -hmm. And for somebody that started 12, 13 games for them, I'm thinking, why wouldn't you not right. let me build on mm -hmm. what I already did? Right. Um, and I was an undrafted player. I right. kind of came up the ranks. But, you know, I was going through my own stuff of kind of not being valued how I thought I yeah, should have yeah. been valued. I, yeah. And, you know, kind of forcing her to get a job that she didn't want, you know, it, it hurt me in the end when she got fired because I felt like I contributed to her getting fired right. because, you know, it wasn't in her heart to have that job. Wow. So I kind of like pushed her towards there. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, necessar not necessarily putting that on myself, but understanding that I was part of it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was part of her depression. How bad did the depression get, if you don't mind me asking? Um, you know, there, there were nights where, you know, words weren't said. We were just kind of sitting there, you know, watching Netflix, diving into shows. Uh, I found myself sometimes, you know, staying at the facility longer than I needed to. I knew the stuff that I was going through. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to pour that onto her because she was going she through something herself. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that said, you know what, I got to get out of this? You know, for both mm -hmm. of you, like, you know, we, we're now we're set. You guys are both in a depression. You're in a depression. Mm -hmm. Something had to happen to say, let's go. What was that? I can say what it was for yeah. me. We got pregnant. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. So y'all yeah. wasn't just watching Netflix, y'all was just yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Netflix, yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. Yeah. We had our okay. moment. Yeah, yeah. pregnancy did it. Yeah, we got pregnant. Um, but what happened right before that, we, we celebrated five years of marriage, Yeah. renewed our vows, Yeah. went off on a trip, yeah. Got pregnant the month after. Well, where did that yeah. even come from? Like the idea to renew the vows? Because you figure renewing the vows can be like yeah. a renewal on the relationship yeah. and all that. So where did that, who's, whose we idea was that? We always wanted to renew it five mm -hmm. years. Okay. We always said okay. we were gonna do it. And I think because of what, at least for me, mm -hmm. because of what we had been through, I was like, I need this. Yeah. I need something mm -hmm. that just kind of gives us a fresh wind. So it was wind. like perfect timing. Like yeah, the five, the five year, year was just like, like yeah. yeah. The five year mark was like, we in this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, just imagine what the next five years could be like. Yeah. So it, it, that mark did it. And then the pregnancy for me, what was the first thing you said when you came in the room? Oh, yeah. So she tried to film me. Yeah, I tried to <laughs> film that. So what, what would you say to your unborn child or whatever? But I was like, you're going to be a daddy. And the first thing he said was, I have a lot of peace and we're going to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> and I kid you not, I don't know why I said that. That moment for me mm. was the moment where I started walking around, because we was in my mother-in-law's house. <laughs> I started walking around. There was an empty lot, or no, like a shack where her grandfather used yeah. to build stuff. I started walking around that area and I was like, there's going to be a home here. We're going to build a home here. Like, mm. I, th the pregnancy gave me vision. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I it literally, I heard the word pregnant and it was like I was pregnant with a thought and an idea and a dream. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Our home is there right now. Yeah, that's, that's where we, we live right now. Our yeah, home which is crazy. Is right there yeah. after after that thing. But that's what drove us out of the depression was yeah. that mark. And then also the very thing that we used to tell our prison kids and the group home kids to have a creative outlet and share your story. You mm -hmm. mean your story means something? Mm -hmm. We created our own. Uh, we created a two-man show mm -hmm. and told our entire and told story, our story and cried through it yeah. and sang oh, and wow. acted yeah. and and, did and the just very put thing. up a show and got some measly dollars together and yeah. got a theater and just put up a, a run That's show cool. for. So that was like therapeutic for you guys. Yeah. It was yeah. therapy. Yeah. 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 It was Sharing therapy. Was yeah. It took it off of us. Yeah. It took the weight off of us. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else was it. like, I've been, it's like this conversation yes. right here. Like, right. Oh, y'all I mean, been through that? Yo. That's yeah. why this yeah. is so important. Yeah. And what, what was yeah. the impetus for you guys? I mean. I think um, after the fourth year, we moved back home into my mom's house mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. and just being back together was helped we didn't know what if we were going to go somewhere else but like i felt i didn't feel like guilty anymore about not working and not contributing mm -hmm. i felt more comfortable i think that's kind of when we got engaged and mm -hmm. like i realized mm -hmm. this was my teammate in life and like mm -hmm. it's okay to be happy now i don't have to like feel guilty about being so happy and mm. like it, everything is going to be okay it is okay we are mm. together i know where my happiness is and we can move on from it gotcha and for me it, it happened a little bit before that because you know when she moved out to new york you know her mother and her family didn't agree with it it was never a matter of they didn't trust me they that just it was the family values like you move in when you, you get, get married, married. Right. Yeah. but b yeah. was so adamant of moving out there because she knew she could be her happiest mm -hmm. out of New York yeah. together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had a conversation with her mom and her mom just straight up said, you know what, I don't agree with this, but I know she's happy with you. Wow. You have one year to marry her, wow. to, at least to get engaged. Right. Right. And, and he waited that full <laughs> 12 <laughs> no, no, no. 300 Not that but, long ago. <laughs> but it's, it, was, it was that realization that everything that I was going through, I felt like Initially, I felt like I was going through it by myself. And mm -hmm. I, I was going through it by myself, and I had a girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. But when I had that conversation with her mom, it really you know, made me realize that, no, I have somebody with me. I'm not just by myself anymore. Yeah. And that's what allowed me to kind of pour into her mm -hmm. to make us as strong as possible. Wow. So by the time you know, I, I did propose, you know, I've, I felt like it happened at the right time. You know, again, I just felt like I wasn't by myself anymore. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I, I had a girlfriend. I felt like I was just, you know, whole. You know, it's funny. About, oh, my bad. You want to go, girl? Did you, if, if it was with that thought, you could finish? Well, it, it was with that, that thought, but also with this thought, like the sense of purpose. For me, when I was going through my depression, it was not living through my sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was playing ball at the time, and I was making money, but I was not happy. So when you wake up every morning and you're doing something and everyone else around you is excited for you, but mm -hmm. you're not happy, wow. mm -hmm. you know, and then on top of that, I was dealing with, you know, the pain meds. So you don't realize how pain meds wow. affect mm -hmm. your mood. Wow. So I wasn't happy and then I was moody. Yeah. I and was like, who is this person? We wow. weren't living together. No, it was awful. And we were, it was almost like I had PTSD because we didn't move, we didn't move back in together until the season was over. Okay. So I went through the whole season. I was taking pain meds, I was taking 14 pills a day between wow. the, the Tylenol and the Vicodin, and wow. I was just trying to get through practice so I can get to the games. I was a free agent, mm -hmm. so you know how that is. You know, mm -hmm, you have to practice. If you don't practice, you, you might get cut that yeah. week. And I'm thinking to myself, like, on top of everything, there's the constant reminder from the NFL that you, I, you don't really belong here because you wasn't drafted, so count your lucky stars that you're here. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's the constant reminder that you're unappreciated, mm -hmm. and now I really don't want to play football but everyone's telling me I could and I should. I'm making money. I don't have my girl with me. And I just became depressed because I wasn't living in my purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I come home and there's nothing for me to do. Like the off season, you know how the off season is. Yeah. Now I'm at home. There's no football. I'm still not living my purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm living with someone who I just spent four months we weren't living together. I have my own routines. I have my own things mm -hmm. that I'm doing. I was wow. still in grad school. She was so in I grad school. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he wanted my life to just stop in that time. And I'm like, yo, let's mm -hmm. go do this. Let's and go I'm do that. Like, right. and, and she couldn't do that. So, I, you know, I, you get moody. You have yeah, this, you know. Yeah. And yeah. It, I remember that it's funny because the imp impetus was I can't just do this. Woke up one night in sweats. 
And my wife, well, she was my girlfriend at the time, was like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and she that. called my receiver coach, and my receiver coach got on the phone. He said, you need to just man up. Stop being a punk. You have a great job. You have a beautiful woman that's with you. Stop being a punk. Man up. We're going to pray about this. I don't want to hear about no pills no more. I don't want to hear about no this, no that. But it was like those words and that like kicking the ass. At that gave, time. At yeah, that, that time, time just gave me the impetus yep. to get up and be like, I'm not doing this anymore. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because you talked about marriage. You talked about having a kid. And mm -hmm. it was like, that was the purpose. Yep. Yeah. That gave you purpose yep. to get out. <laughs> you know, yeah. getting married, that gave you a purpose. Yep. Okay, so now I have a woman I got to take care of. I have kids I got to yep. take care of. Mm -hmm. Well, my receiver coach is like, you have a good woman next to you. I'm like, you know what? He right. Yeah. Yep. Like, I can't be wallowing on my, like, I'm, oh, woe is me. Yep. You know, yeah. it's all my life sucked. Mm -hmm. Nah, it's like you get that purpose. And once you get that purpose, it's like everything makes sense. Like, yeah. when, I, when I had a conversation uh, with her mom, she said something that stuck with me. It was like, you know, you have to take care of her now. And I found myself being at my best when I know I have somebody that's waiting on me, I have somebody that is looking to me for guidance that, right. that yeah. I can, again, purpose. pour into. It was a challenge. I can do this. I want to see how good I can do it. Right. And mm -hmm. I feel like that definitely changed our relationship for the yeah. better because, you know, I looked at it like a challenge. And, you know, as an athlete, you try to equate everything to that because yeah, no, you feel absolutely. like you're at your best when stakes are on the line. Yeah, your and back's against the wall. Absolutely. So I, I just kind of looked at it from that mindset and just tried to make the most out of it. And I, I feel like... But we, what were the mechanisms? We have. What were the mechanisms you guys used to get out of that state? You know, like, was there something you... Like, for me, for example, it was, I'm no longer sleeping all day. I have to get up out of the bed. Mm -hmm. Like, that to me was my first mechanism. Yeah. I have to be up out of the bed, out of the room. So when she got up to go to class... Mm -hmm. I got up and I got out. And we got rid of those pills. Too. Yeah, 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 the, the yeah, pills yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, that yeah. vice, the vice of that escape. Mm -hmm. Flushed them. Because mm -hmm. people think that the, the escape or the pill is like a, oh, I want to get high. Mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't. It was a functional addiction to where you don't feel normal if you're not doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was like a, a conscious decision to say, I'm going to wake up in the morning yeah. and I'm not going to take it. I'm going to find normalcy yeah. and just being up and out. Exactly. That was my mechanism. What mm -hmm. was you guys' mechanism, mm -hmm. all, all of you? Yeah. I would have to say, uh, when I heard the words pregnancy, I mm -hmm. thought about uh, pregnant, I thought about inheritance. When I heard pregnant, it was just like, all right, there's something that I'm gonna have to give somebody else outside mm -hmm. of my marriage that's gonna come through us. Different things that didn't matter before all of a sudden mattered and became mm -hmm. my drive. Mm -hmm. So the brownies, things like that, it became like, oh, you just that cut ain't it. that I can't stay here. I don't even, cause that ain't got nothing to do with legacy. Like, I can't give her that. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> now, I know what you mean, bro. Yeah. I, I know what you yeah. mean. Like, so that, absolutely. For me, what, what, what yeah. was it for you? Because I know you. I would say, well, that show did a lot for me because he's more of the actor, creator type of thing. And mm -hmm. I did that in high school, but I hadn't been on stage mm -hmm. in a long time. Mm -hmm. And so putting everything into that, writing again, yeah. like rehearsals, having a rhythm to my day again, like mm -hmm. where I have to wake up, we have to rehearse, we have to do, Man, that's, like, yeah, that's, just yeah. a rhythm, something mm -hmm. to look forward to, just, right. like, yeah. that took it, and then being pregnant, and knowing that I had to change my routine, the way I ate, what yeah. I did, like, you gotta move, you gotta take care of yourself, like, there is a human being that's dependent on you. Mm -hmm. That yeah. changed everything for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. So having a rhythm, um, and then just knowing that I had another soul that was like, was dependent Depending on everything on I did, everything yeah. I ate, like, yeah. I couldn't just sit there and, and binge anymore. I'm like, look, right. like, yeah. you, got, right. you got to get it together. Yeah. 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 And it don't Change just everything. happen that, that nah. as soon as baby comes out, like, yeah. you need to get a rhythm together. Yeah. 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 What was, what was For that? me, um, honestly, I don't think there has been some, like a, I'm just out of it because, yeah, I'm still yeah. working yeah. through it because I still like, at the same time, I am so happy. Every day I wake up so happy and I just was feeling guilty about that because I felt like that it's not, I just shouldn't like be. you don't deserve right. to be I don't that deserve happy. this. And like other, yeah. I can't talk to other people mm. about it because they're not as happy mm -hmm. as, as I am. And, and outside looking in, like mm. everybody wants that happiness, but they don't, have, most people don't have it. And I. Why me? Why? It's why? called survivor's remorse. You ever heard of the term yes. survivor's remorse? Exactly, exactly. And that happens in our communities a lot where mm -hmm. you don't see a lot of wealth around you. Mm -hmm. So when you do happen to achieve a certain level of wealth, you feel guilty mm -hmm. 
that Absolutely. you you know you feel remorseful. I felt that at one point too. And it's funny we talk about money. You start making money. The first thing I did was start giving, giving money to away. people yeah. mm-hmm. because I felt guilty. Like dang, I'm the only one that has an opportunity to live the way I want to. Mm-hmm. You look at your friends, you look at your family, mm-hmm. and they're still struggling a little mm-hmm. bit. That can cause a, a, wow. a depression. Mm-hmm. You know, it, mm-hmm. and we talk about this all the time. We want all of our people to grow with yeah. us and be able right. to mm-hmm. accomplish yeah. things. Yeah. And it's difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's, it's difficult yeah. because everyone doesn't have the same work ethic yeah. or ability to. Right. And it ha- it's having to fight with that right. while mm-hmm. trying to be happy is not easy. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so mm-hmm. I, you know, I can definitely relate yeah. to what you're going through. Yeah. And yeah. We've been through that together. We go through that with our families all, all the time. The time. Yeah. Yeah. And before we wrap, I'd love to just touch on, um, I know I was a little silent on, on this episode just mm-hmm. because I know this was a devout thing, but his depression also impacted me in a way, mm-hmm. um, in a very big way, because mm-hmm. I felt like for a, a period of time I was living with a stranger. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know yeah. who this was. Um, and I started to internalize that a lot, which tends to happen. Um, I think when you wonder what did I do wrong or what am I not doing mm-hmm. that caused him to get to this, pe- mm-hmm. this place and someone who had previously brought him so much joy or at least he's expressed that to me, yeah. mm-hmm. I then felt like, well, what am I not doing? And it became a thing where I blamed myself a lot yeah. for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a, a feeling of, of hopelessness, and I felt like I was not able to pull him out of this funk. Wow. Um, did either of you or any of you experience that feeling of hopelessness? Mm-hmm. Like, how am I not able to pull my significant other through this? Mm-hmm. See, oh. No, you go, go for it. See, when, you know, Early on, when we were going through after she moved out there, and again having that conversation with her mom, you know, when it came to communication, that for me early on that was a big thing in our relationship that I wanted to try to to up because you know even when we first started like texting, I mm. when we first started dating, I would text her all the time, mm. and, and I'd give her paragraphs, and she mm. would send me back the okay. The yeah, the like just right. the one word is daggers. Mm-hmm. So you know, early on, I just really wanted to up our communication with that, and uh, you know, once having that you know having that conversation with her with her mom and and her family, you know, for me it was going through the stuff that I was going through and trying to you know build our relationship up. I knew that I had to express you know some of the thoughts and emotions that I was dealing with in order to pull her emotions out so Which we can start the dialogue. Uh, so, no. you know, just, just in talking with her and, you know, telling myself, I need to tell her I didn't have a good day today. I need to tell her that I'm feeling some kind of way about this or that, and hopefully, you know, she That's will reciprocate. That's difficult, bro. Yeah. That's it, difficult. It, it was hard. We're taught yeah. as athletes to never show weakness. Absolutely. Like, you can't, you can't complain about anything. Absolutely. That's, and that's not even just an athlete, that's just a man. Especially mm-hmm. a black man. Mm-hmm. You know, you the man, you the head of the household. Yeah, yeah. You just say, you go to work, you come home. Yeah. You know, bills gotta get paid. If you can't pay the bill, mm-hmm. you lie about paying the bill until you find <laughs> yeah, a way to, get that to pay the bill. Like, Absolutely. that's just what yeah. we're taught. And <laughs> it's funny because that's why black men struggle with depression so mm-hmm. much. Yeah. And mental health, Be, yeah, you know, because you, you have to put on this facade yeah. right. of, of, you know, masculinity mm-hmm. yeah. and you can't be vulnerable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you spend so many days putting on the facade yeah. and then, you know, at some point it's going to boil over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I see it with my friends yeah. with my friends. Everything is always cool mm-hmm. until that day where it's not. And you're like, what happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, well, I was going through this and, mm-hmm. and, and even, even asking. Like I sometimes I call my boy, I'm like, yo, you good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm good. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, Are you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. asking you, and then they open up. Yeah. Mm. We as men don't do that yeah. enough. Yeah, that's the true yeah. definition of being yeah. your brother's keeper. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Not just with people who you're blood related to, but friends yeah. and, yeah, and people who you yeah. just need to check on every now and again. And sometimes we wait till it's too late. Mm-hmm. To say anything. Yeah. I, feel, I feel like we should totally like group hug. Yeah. Wait, wait, I know I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it, man. Yeah. Yeah. It was so nice to see you all. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. We so have each other, man. For real. Absolutely. Yeah, That's what this couch is for. Yeah. Yeah. This couch is for yeah. moments like this. Man. So thank you all for yeah. opening up and being vulnerable, vulnerable, yeah. and allowing us to to ask the questions that we yeah, need to yeah. ask because I, I feel like y'all. everybody yeah. needs to hear this. So yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Thank you all for watching this episode of Couch Conversations.